And now, in CBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen with host Kevin Oxner. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Oxner. Thanks for joining us. Today, we're talking about Mycoplasma bovis, how to control and treat the disease. And joining me in the studio today is, first of all, Dr. Dan Str Scruggs from Pfizer Animal Health. You're with the Beef Vet Operations Group, is that right? Yes, sir. Glad to be here. We also have with us Dr. Sean Blood, a veterinarian with Hitch Enterprises of Guyman, Oklahoma. That's correct. And Ryan Salee comes to us from Rocky Ford, yes, Colorado, sir. and Tempest Feed Yards. Yes, sir. Also from Lamoni, is that right? Lamoni, mm -hmm. Iowa. Yes. Uh, Jim Schwab, a producer out there. Thanks for coming. Thank you. I want to start with you, Dr. Scruggs, and just tell us, first of all, what is Mycoplasma bovis? Well, the short answer to that is Mycoplasma bovis is a bacteria. It's, it's a little different than a lot of the other bacteria that we think about and we're used to that cause disease in animals. Uh, mycoplasmas in general cause a, a slowly progressive, more chronic disease. And uh, therein lies some of the differences with Mycoplasma bovis and how we recognize it and what it does to us in the feed yards. Um, if you go back and look, Mycoplasma bovis causes respiratory disease predominantly, but it also causes uh, joint infections, ear infections, causes mastitis in, in cows, and it can also cause uh, reproductive disease. So it's an organism that uh, affects a great number of body systems. Tell us a little bit about the history. When did we first start uh, seeing problems with this? Well, I think Mycoplasma bovis has been with us since the earth cooled. Um, if you go back and look at in the veterinary literature all the way back into the 50s, you see references to mycoplasmas in cattle and you can see descriptions of lesions very similar to what we've, we've, we've seen in mycoplasma. So it's been with us for quite a while. Um, but somewhere along in the early to mid 90s, we saw just a little bit of an increase in it. And somewhere around the, the fall of 1999, winter of 2000, that's when it seemed we almost drove off a cliff mm. with mycoplasma bovis. And the incidents, at least in the areas where where I'm involved just seemed to go up tremendously and the explanation for that has kind of eluded us but that's why all the interest in mycoplasma is really what's happened since about 2000 till now. Dr. Blood, when did you first start seeing signs of this with some of your customers? Yeah, and it, it would be fairly consistent with what Dr. Scruggs just said there and you know we'd see sporadic cases prior to that and uh, um, it typically wasn't uh, a large number of animals that would be affected with it but since 2000 we've come to see more and more cases of that and in uh, larger numbers of animals in a group that would be affected with it. Now Jim I understand you've had to deal with this in your own operation can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah each each fall when we would start purchasing calves we would get uh, oh maybe eight ten twelve calves that would uh, come out with those joints those swollen joints mm -hmm. and and at the time there was basically nothing that we could do for them. Um, you would, they would either come up as chronics, cripples, or, or a death loss. Mm -hmm. And we, we just kept working with them, and we could get some of them back to the pen or back to the pasture, okay. but uh, it was just a pretty devastating disease. Ryan, how about you? What, uh, what have you seen in your own operation? Um, I would say real consistent with what these gentlemen are saying here today. Uh, we we started seeing signs in early 2000 and it seemed like in the last four or five years it's been worse mm -hmm. and each year and each fall is different you know on calves and we handle a lot of high-risk calves okay. and uh, each fall is somewhat different from the other but mycoplasma is seems to be a lingering problem in our cattle industry mm -hmm. and uh, you know uh, thank God for Draxon uh, <laughs> which is the only thing that seemed to bail us out at this time. Well, I wanted to ask you specifically, what were some of the negative effects that you saw in your feed yard, and, and how long did it take to finally get it under control? Well, I think uh, the lingering effects of, uh, uh, you know, arthritic looking stuff, uh, ear down, a lot of, uh, uh, seemed like the only thing that helped back then was maybe some signs of any kind of tetracycline seemed like it helped with it but it would not cure sure. it would not uh, get us out of the out of the hole yeah. and mycoplasma is uh, uh, something that can just explode on you 30 to 60 days later after you think you got it under control and uh, and you know a lot of good veterinarians in southeastern Colorado have, you know have steered us in a direction that uh, is where we are today 
Jim, what would you say? I mean, what, what kind of negative effects did you see it having on your operation? Did it take you very long to understand that and get it under control? Uh, the chronics, the cripples, the death loss, that was, that was our big thing. I mean, uh, it, it never was a real serious thing as some of the wrecks that I have heard of, mm -hmm. but uh, it, it was devastating and, and uh, as soon as we got the Draxon into them, it changed the whole program for us. Outstanding. Well, I want to ask you guys some more questions about that, treatment protocols and so forth. Uh, when we continue, we will continue our discussion and talk specifically about the treatment options. Stay with us.